This anonymous request was a dealer's choice. Something that made me happy, she said. That was the only criteria. Well, I picked this because it's something near and dear to my heart and has been so for about half my life when I happened upon it during a sci-fi channel marathon. What Jose Chung's from Outer Space is for the X-Files, a game of pool is for the Twilight Zone. It is brilliant but distinctly different from the house style. It is not on the lists of the average person familiar with the show, but it is for anyone who has watched them all. It's not one that you can boil down to the surprise, for to boil down a game of pool is to remove that which makes it what it is. And yet, because I'm a glutton for punishment, that's essentially what I'm about to do. It begins with the great Jack Klugman playing pool master Jesse Cardiff, pulling off an incredible bank shot that no one is there to witness, yet proves his undeniable skill with a cue. But even in that, all he can do is lament that people unfairly compare him to the late Fats Brown. The man was a legend, but he's dead and gone, yet people won't stop talking about him. He's a mountain that Jesse can never climb and defeat because he's not competing against a man. He's competing against a legend. Against an actual man, he insists, he would win. Well, Fats Brown, played by the also great Jonathan Winters, answers the call. Winters was a comedy actor known for playing blue-collar guys or slobs, but here he shows his range, bringing to life the serious, debonair Fats Brown, pool master of the world. Fats appears in the flesh, and the shocked Jesse doesn't know what to make of this. So Fats addresses one of the themes about being a legend, in this case, that even when a man dies, his legend lives on. That, of course, is what Jesse is competing with, but now he's being offered a chance to play against that legend and to try and vanquish it, and thus become the legend himself. But Fat's legend has been challenged before, and he has no respect for Jesse. You like to play with fire, but you don't like to cook, he says of Jesse's boasting, because Jesse knows that really he's second rate in Fat's estimation. Jesse says, though, that all that Fats is is the same thing. It's just talk, just a reputation. He doesn't have to back it up. I heard a man in this very pool room swear that he saw you make a nine-cushion bank. And you don't believe it? It's impossible. You hit the ball that hard, it won't stay on the table. So Jesse is down for playing Fats, but there have to be stakes. After all, Jesse wants to take away the crown. He's got to put up something for himself if he were to lose. And that something is his life. He wins, he lives, he loses, he dies. Jesse hesitates and Fats goads him, saying one of the things he has to learn is that being a legend is more than just a matter of skill. One of those things you need is nerve. His speech on this is inspiring. You know where I come from? There's a race driver. Go to the track and whisper his name. Say Tazio Nuvolari and watch the heads nod up and down. Or go to a bullring and hear them speak of Manolete. Both men face death daily, and both are legends. You never make the great at anything by playing it safe. But Jesse has put his everything into this. He gave up all other distractions. No movies, no books, no girls. Sometimes he actually sleeps on the table because he's too exhausted to go to bed when he's finished. This small thing is the seed for the secondary theme of the episode. We'll get to that soon. He accepts the terms of the bet, and Fats takes out his specially made pool cue. $600, which, if we add up all the math here, means that he had it made around 1912, which would make it worth about twenty grand today. But like all legends, Fats uses the absolute best to help him be the absolute best. They're playing a really long game where they knock 14 balls in and then rack and then continue. It's for points. You score your way up to 300. Fats breaks, barely touching the balls, yet putting two into the rail, so it qualifies as a break. Jesse responds by barely kissing one ball and leaving the cue ball at a spot where it's hard for Fats to strike it. When Fats fails to sink, Jesse then puts some balls in the pockets and then does a three-cushion bank to sink one of them, a really impressive shot, which Fats only describes as not bad. 
Jesse is astonished by this lack of grace and goes off on a tirade to explain why he does this. Why does he play this game to this extreme? Because everywhere he went in his youth, other guys lorded their superiority at something over him. But then he found this game. He found something that he could excel at, and he's embraced it. Jesse's off to a great start, 59-7, to but Fats gets control and rallies, and eventually they're just points away from the end. Jesse needs to sink just one more ball, but while Fats is sweating, Jesse chokes, and Fats comes back to even things up before Jesse gets control again, another chance for him to finally win. Fats begins talking, what sounds at first blush like an attempt to distract him. He's doing other things to deliberately distract him, we can see that, but his words are sincere, that it's painful to see Jesse rotting away in here. You didn't get to be the best sitting on a park bench. Spent a lot of time with that cue in your hands. Of course I did, but I took time out to live, too. I've been places where they never heard of billiards. Fifteen ball in a corner park. I may not look the part, Jesse, but I made love, walked uphill, swam in the ocean. When I think of the wonderful things there are to see and to do. His tomfoolery causes Jesse to miss his shot, and Fats rebukes him for coming apart over some little thing like that, and then proceeds to just knock the ball into position so that Jesse can't possibly fail to sink it. Jesse is floored at this, the shot of a lifetime. It's what separates him as a loser and him as the grand champion of all time. The best. A legend. And before he even hits, he's gloating. I'll give you a chance of my crown, Jesse. But only if you're willing to stake your life on the game, Jesse. Couldn't be a nice, friendly little game, huh? I take them as I find them. To you, pool is not a nice, friendly game. If you're familiar with this episode, you might know that the ending was changed. But even if you take this one as it is, it fits very well. The reason the stakes are for Jesse's life is because he's already staked that. He's given up on his life. There's nothing else. There is only the game. The second theme of the episode that I mentioned earlier is that wanting to be the best often demands everything from us. We are everything in one way, but... In order to achieve that, we are nothing in any other. Jesse can gamble his life because he has nothing to lose. If he can't possibly be the best, what is really the point of him being alive? In retrospect, everything Fats was doing was just testing Jesse. Everyone, he says, needs a challenge. And that's what he was. Something to measure himself against. Jesse has proven he has what it takes to win. But as this is the Twilight Zone, Fats also has a hidden motive of his own. Being the best, being a legend, carries a responsibility. And he has now happily relinquished it to Jesse Cardiff. From now on, it's Jesse that has to answer those who presume that they have what it takes to displace him as the greatest of all time. He not only gave his life for this game, he gave his afterlife as well. This episode is a must-see. You have two highly talented actors reading from a script that is crafted like old-time artisans toiled over it. It's deep, engaging, beautifully performed, and very impressive work on the way that they integrated things. They allow the actual pool player to do what is called for, and without a need to cut in between shots, they make it look as if the two actors were actually making these impossible shots. Whenever I have a thing that I know is high risk, high reward, I always name it after Fats Brown. I'm a very risk averse person, so it's a kick in my complacency to take chances sometimes. It's entirely possible this episode has changed my life for that reason. Please give it a chance. I don't think you'll be disappointed. <laughs>